and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part three of my comparison of infinite painter brushes and traditional art tools. In this video, we're going to look at the paint category. This is infinite painter for Android, but these same brushes can be found in iOS. The paint category resembles acrylic and oils. So my favorite brush in this category is the Leo brush, and I use it for most of my painting. And as you can see, it gives kind of a really nice uh, painterly effect, and it, where it reacts really well to the texture. So when you change the, the texture or the depth, you can get a really neat look, you can get a dry brush look, or you can get a real feathered look at the end so that it looks like you're painting on a canvas or paper, and it's really versatile. So it's kind of my favorite brush. And as you can see, you can go in here and you can change the textures and it really works well on a rough texture. It makes it look like it's on real rough paper with that. And then you can reset it, of course, and go back to the original look for it. And then the next brush that I like to use a lot is the Vents brush. And this brush gives kind of a really thick look. It's not a real thick, thick paint look, but it shows more um, texture and makes it kind of look like a little bit of a thicker paint. And you can use it also with varying textures and it reacts really well and makes it look like it has thick or thin paint. And you can get a really nice painterly effect just using this brush too. And as you can see here, I'm making it look like there's thick paint on the canvas. And then my next favorite brush is the Angelo brush. And this one shows an even thicker paint look. And so you can adjust it really wide and that way it'll show the, the thick paint look here. And you can go ahead and play around with the textures. It responds really well to the textures. You can play around with the blending and, and make it blend better. And this gives it kind of a a la prima paint look, sort of a, you know, where you use oil paint and you don't let it dry you just kind of um, paint something all at once with oil paint and so you get kind of a really thick oil paint look and sometimes it's not real sharp you can get that look um, using the the blending and the mix-in settings for this brush <clears throat> and as you see you can just kind of play around with it and do all kinds of things and the next brush that I like to use is the Ramy brush, and it's kind of more of a glazing look with it. You can, it kind of looks like you're using an acrylic or paint that's really thinned down, and, and you're glazing over a bottom layer or something, and you can really get kind of a, a nice effect that way with it, and it also has a rounded tip on it so it gives kind of a look like a filbert brush when you're painting with a with your regular uh, oil paints or acrylics you can use your filbert brush and get kind of a look this way and then the next brush that I like to use is the Vermeer brush now this one gives kind of a bristle brush look it's not real smooth and it works fairly well if you're using uh, painting it for grass or hair, something like that. You want kind of a rough look, and this one gives a really good rough look. <clears throat> and it responds also very well to texture. And then you can go ahead and change all kinds of different things. You can make it blend in better. You can change all the the opacity, the texture, just play around with all these brushes and you can get some really good effects. And the next brush that I like is the Pollock brush. 
And I like this brush because I can use it to mimic foliage and bushes and things like that. And it's sort of like if you take your bristle brush and put some paint on the end of it and just tap it straight onto the canvas. That gives it a really nice irregular look. And you can use it for all kinds of bushes and trees and that sort of thing in your landscapes. And it also works nicely for texture or patterns on clothes. Even the ground, uh, kind of a rough look if you paint the ground with it. And of course you can turn it into a glazing brush if you want to and make it look really light and sort of watercolory like. And you can play around with the spacing and the jitter on it and get even a rougher texture and an even rougher look on it. And you can, it's quite versatile. You can use it for even fur on animals and things like that. And then the last brush is the Renoir brush. And I like to use it for leaves and sort of a spiky look on plants if the, it's stickery or something like that. And also it gives a pretty good splattery look if you need to use it for, uh, say, ocean foam or something like that. And you can also use the, the Pollock brush for ocean foam. Just use these two together in conjunction and they work really well for water splatters and at the bottom of a waterfall and things like that. So those are really nice brushes to, to use for your landscapes. And then you can just go ahead and sort of play around with all the settings if you want to. And I'm going back to the Leo brush and just showing you what you can do. You can change the, the size of the brush, the flow of the paint on the brush. You can make it look like it's really um, thick paint coming out. Or you can change the spacing on it. And you can change the rotation of the brush head to give it a more irregular look like a so that it's even more natural looking like a natural paintbrush and of course as I mentioned before you can play around with the textures you can do all kinds of things with the watercolor look here you can make it into a watercolor type of brush if you want to <laughs> you can change the watercolor bleed and all that on it you can change the spacing you know you can do anything you want to on these kind of brushes and then you can save them I don't know if I've mentioned this before but then you can save these brushes and keep them for your palette or whatever and so you can also share these brushes in the community now this feature is not enabled in iOS yet. It's just in Android. But you can go ahead and upload these to the community and share these brushes. So here I'm just kind of playing around with the flow and the size. You can use the graph charts to, to change the controls on it a little bit if you want to. And then you can go ahead and name the brush. And here I've named the brush and I've saved it. And then you can go ahead and upload it to the community there. And then you would just hit OK. And that would upload it to the community. And you can give it whatever name that you want. And then people can download these brushes for themselves. And then, of course, you can reset it back to the way it was. And just make sure that it blends and... It just has a really nice coverage. And then these are the brushes that I use traditionally. Uh, flat wash, bristle brush, filberts, and the long script brushes. And I just use different sizes. Occasionally I'll throw in a round brush too. And so all these brushes can make these kinds of strokes. And here I wanted to show how you can do this with the Infinite Painter ones. So for a dry brush stroke, I just take the Leo brush and turn the texture depth up really high. And when you do this, it gives a look like it's taking off the paint on the canvas here. And so as you can see, you get a really 
dry brush effect which is a brush that doesn't have a lot of paint on it and you can get a really nice feathery look with this you can do fur you can do uh, plants just all kinds of different looks and then the next sh uh, brush stroke that I use is the X-shaped stroke and it's a sort of a crisscross shape and I use this naturally on my uh, traditional canvases to get a smooth look to the sky so as you can see it kind of gives a really smooth look and doesn't leave a lot of brush strokes and it gives yet it still looks painterly and then here I'm using what you call a scumble stroke which is just it's a fancy word for a bunch of really rough strokes thrown together on the canvas and you can use this for dirt and things on the ground and rocks and it works really well for making these textures and then of course I'm making the bushes with the Pollock brush and again you would just take your bristle brush and tap the end of it in paint when you're doing this traditionally and you would get this same look and I'm also using the Vermeer brush and this gives the look of leaves and sort of kind of pine needles even you can probably use it for pine needles and things like that here I'm using the Svetlana brush out of the ink category that's what I like to use a lot for the grass but if you're in the paint category what you can do is just go ahead and choose one of the paint category brushes and I'll do that here in a minute usually the Leo brush works the best and just make it really small and this sort of mimics the script brush that I have and what you do traditionally with the script brush is thin your paint mixture down and just kind of roll the brush in this mixture till you get a pointed tip and then it makes a really sharp grass like look and you can do this with the Leo brush and then you can take the Vince brush and play around with the texture a little bit and increase the texture depth and you can get kind of a, a clump of grass with using the vents brush and you can make this brush look pretty wide and it gives kind of a bristle brush look that you would get if you were uh, using your traditional brush and you can also do this with the Angelo brush and then I also like to do the waves and I use the waves with the Angelo brush and I make a banana shaped stroke with this and this just makes a, a really nice waves look when you're doing an ocean scene or something and then you can just vary your paint colors and go back over it and the Angelo brush works really nice for this and of course you can use your bristle brush or even a script brush for that if you're following on traditionally so as you can see you can really mimic that style with these paint brushes and then you can also make twiggy branches if you turn you take the Leo brush and make it really small or you can use the ink category again but as you can see when you use the paint category it's a little bit darker and fuller and a little bit more non-uniform and that makes it look more natural and then here's an example I did of some chili peppers and as you can see I used the background texture for the adobe wall and in this yellow rose painting you see how you can get an oil painter look by using sort of the thicker paints and blending them together this is a landscape painting that I have used all the previous strokes that I showed you including the crisscross strokes, the dry brush strokes the really thin strokes for grass, twiggy strokes for the bushes, and the fuzzy brush strokes to make the bushes. So this is the end of part three of my comparison of infinite painter brushes and traditional art tools. And in part four, I'm going to go ahead and look at the spray brushes and the watercolor brushes. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below, and I will catch you later.